Come, Holy Spirit, come. Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the online worship of Word and Sacrament of St. Paul's and Nativity Lutheran Churches in Reading, Pennsylvania, on this, the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. We are glad that you are joining us. Welcome to September, as we gather on this Labor Day weekend. We give thanks to God for the gift of work, and we pray for those who are looking for jobs that they may find meaningful employment. After Sunday worship, St. Paul's will be giving out hot dogs to our neighbors. Thanks to all who contributed food for the day, and thanks to all who will serve. Next weekend, September 9th and 10th, is God's Work, Our Hands, an ELCA churchwide day of service. Our congregations collect its supplies to make 100 personal care kits for Lutheran World Relief. On Saturday at 4 p.m. before our 5 o'clock worship service at Nativity, we will be assembling them there. And on Sunday at St. Paul's, we will do so after the 9 a.m. worship service. Thanks to Gladys, Penny, Kathy, and Linda for handing out pencils to students at 13th and Union on the first day of school. Thank you to Robin, Vanessa, and Keith for coming into St. Paul's to help in the office. Leah H. of Nativity is home from Encompass Rehabilitation, and Barb S., also of Nativity, is home from St. Joe's, recovering from pneumonia. She had a port inserted and had her chemotherapy, which went well. Please continue to keep her in your prayers. We also pray for Pastor Sonia and her family. Pastor Sonia is one of the pastors at Ark of Refuge that meets at Nativity, and her father passed from life to life in this world with life, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, on August 29th. Just a reminder that because of the Labor Day holiday, St. Paul's Food Pantry will be held on Monday, September 11th. And the Crop Walk fundraiser at Isaac's is going to be held on September 7th. Please go there for a great meal and to help out a wonderful cause. And now, dear ones, beloved of Christ, let us prepare our hearts to worship Jesus. Remembering our baptism, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessing in the breaking, in the presence at 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that in your name it will be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. O Lord, you know. Remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts, I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading from Psalm 26. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. 
I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. A reading from Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Gospel for Sunday, September 3rd, 2023, the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world, 
but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Apparently, the struggle that Jesus had with Satan did not end when he came out of those 40 days in the wilderness after he was driven there by the Holy Spirit after his baptism by John. Well, we should have expected that, shouldn't we have? Luke tells us that when the devil had finished every test, he departed from Jesus until a more opportune time. But who would have thought that the opportune time would have come in a conversation that Jesus had with his disciples? Or who would have imagined that the devil would come back to speak to our Lord through his dear friend, Peter? The temptation of Christ had to do with whether or not Jesus would endure the betrayal, the physical abuse, the painful death of the crucifixion, or would he enjoy life and die at a ripe old age back home in Nazareth? How interesting it is that this temptation comes to him by Satan speaking and using Peter. Scholars say that in this text, Jesus is beginning to really show his disciples what he had talked about earlier. He had talked about what the cost was of following our Lord, taking up a cross, denying themselves, losing their lives for his sake. But now he is pointing out to them something that they apparently failed to pursue. Now I think that for you and me, I know for me anyway, that sometimes someone needs to point my attention to a truth that I have may, maybe missed out on, misunderstood, or omitted in my grasp of what the Christian faith and life is all about. In this case, it was the sacrifice and suffering that Jesus and Jesus' disciples would have to go through. Jesus is not just showing them, not just telling them, he is also showing them what it will mean. When Jesus tells his friends that he is going to Jerusalem to die, to give his life for them, and for others. Peter pulls him aside and says, Oh, God forbid it. This cannot happen to you. There has to be an easier way. We won't let you do this to yourself. God won't either. And Jesus responds with almost the same words that he spoke to the devil during the temptation in the wilderness after his baptism. Jesus says to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Matthew told us earlier that Jesus said to the devil, Away with you, Satan. Back in the wilderness, as in this instance, there is something that is going on. That the temptation would make it an easier way for Jesus back in the wilderness and here with his disciples. Usually we think of temptations as being things that are going to be immoral or breaking the law or having some hard thing happening. But in this story, it is for the Christian something for us to recognize that sometimes the temptation comes to us for us to choose the easy, comfortable way to get out rather than doing it the way of Jesus Christ. 
Jesus reminds his disciples then, and he reminds his disciples now, that it takes a painful effort to understand that God's thoughts are different from our thoughts, that God's ways are different from our ways. What God has in mind for us may be totally different from what we thought we have figured out for ourselves. In a way, perhaps Peter here is speaking for all of us. Had it been up to Peter, Jesus would have avoided the cross, and Jesus certainly would not have challenged us and them to take up our crosses, to follow in Jesus' footsteps, to live the kind of life that he wants for you and for me. After all, Peter would be in denial rather than in self-denial. And we know that three times after Jesus was arrested, Peter denied any sort of a relationship with Jesus because he was scared and because he did not want to have the pain of following our Lord. You know, so often we see these advertisements on television or on Facebook or in magazines that Promises to make things easy for us. Oh, just do this and you can lose weight. Oh, just do this and you'll look better. Oh, do this and you'll have much better looking hair. Well, we want to pick up on that, don't we? We certainly wouldn't give things a second chance if they were truthful and said, you know, it's not really easy to lose weight, to have good hair, to be able to take care of yourself. We want life to be easy. I know that, don't we all? And especially these days when life can be so hard. We look around and that is what a lot of Christian churches are doing these days. That it is talking about the gospel of prosperity. There are churches today that sing only upbeat songs and hymns. They don't listen to some of the challenging hymns. They don't sing some of the challenging hymns that talk about our faith and how difficult it can be. They have, in fact, taken out the phrase, forgive us our sins from the Lord's Prayer, because people don't like to feel guilty. They don't use the word worship or liturgy because it means working and doing things and standing in awe and fear of God. There are even some churches that people have told me they visited and there is no longer a cross that is in the nave or in the sanctuary. Are we overly hesitant to challenge people or to confront them with a faith that might at times be inconvenient and uncomfortable. We know that there was a, a cartoon by Doonesbury about how we have to make things so nice and easy so people will come. And so there are things like exercise classes and coffee hours and, you know, don't let anything be difficult. One of the things that we see in this gospel passage tonight is that Jesus is being completely honest with his disciples, and he is being completely honest with us. He is telling us exactly what it means and what is involved if we choose to follow him. He didn't water down the demands that are made of being a Christian or following Jesus. He talks about picking up the cross, and this is not when someone has cancer or someone is struggling with um, not having a job and this is my cross to bear. No, Jesus is talking about standing up and taking on the cross that was marked in your forehead at the time of your baptism. That that is the cross that you carry because you carry Jesus on you and in you. We know that many of Jesus' followers have been willing to pray, pay the price. It's pointed out that probably only one of the original disciples 
died a natural death. And that 40% of the New Testament letters were written by the author who was in prison. So what does that mean? What does it mean when we are concerned about making things easy and making it right and not wanting to have the hard things that it means to follow a Jesus? Dietrich Bonhoeffer talks about the fact that it is not cheap grace, that it is something that was bought and paid for by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And yet so often, we are anxious to choose the easy way, and we don't want to put in much effort about what we are doing. I've been reading lately about birds who are breaking out of their shells in order to be born. And one of the things that they say is that it's important for the bird to be able to peck at the shell because that's what's going to strengthen the bird for life. As much as we want to help that bird get out, it weakens the bird. And so what are we doing to strengthen our faith? Well, we come to worship. We read our Bible. We connect with brothers and sisters in Christ. We send notes to folks as you sign the card for Pastor Sonia to let her know that her fellow Christians here at Nativity are praying for her and for her family as she experienced her father's death. She is a woman of faith who knows where he is, and yet death is hard. We all understand that. I heard the story about a little girl who went to Sunday school for the first time. She was all excited about going, but when she came home, she told her family that she was really rather disappointed that first day in Sunday school. Because the lesson was that Jesus told us to go into the world and make disciples of all nations. And her mother said to her, well, that's wonderful. What about that? And she said, Mom, all we did was sit at the table. We didn't go out into the world to tell others about Jesus. We are called to not just sit around. Called to go and tell, to share God's love and God's light, and to invite people to be part of the mission and the ministry that Jesus calls us to be about in the here and now. It's not easy, but it is amazing. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed, the one that we use at baptisms and at funerals. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. God of life, your words are the joy at the heart of your church. Draw the seeker to you. Place messages of hope and healing in the mouths of your witnesses and open your children to your truth when we stumble. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of steadfast love, renew the earth by your spirit that lands and oceans reveal the beauty of your creation. Challenge us to live humbly and peaceably as part of your world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of patience, lead those who govern to hold fast to what is good. Guide them to show honor to the people in their care. Overcome evil in all nations and grant peace to peoples and places mired in conflict. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of deliverance, remember all who are suffering, lonely and in pain. Liberate your people being insulted, persecuted, or in the grasp of the ruthless. Give endurance to workers who persevere on this Labor Day and ensure fair wages and safe working environments. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of justice, equip this congregation to boldly follow you in uncertain times and to remain faithful in prayer when facing challenges. Show us how best to love and care for one another and our communities. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of glory, we give thanks for the saints who now dwell with you in splendor. Nurture us in faith until the day we join their heavenly song. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share our Lord's peace with one another. Gladys, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you, Pastor. The peace of the Lord be with you always, Pastor. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks, our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy.
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thanks be to God. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, shed for all people, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thanks be to God. And now with confidence as children of God, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved of Jesus, come to the table. Receive nourishment for today and all the days of your life. Thank you, Jesus. This is the body of Christ that is given for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ that is shed for you. Amen. Amen. Gladys, the body and blood of Jesus Christ given and shed for you. Amen. Pastor, the body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace always. Amen. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.